Hallelujah. We praise God. We praise God. For this is the day. Still this day that he has made. We rejoice and we're glad in what he's doing in this hour. And in this season. As we enter in with prayer, we're at the two-week mark. 14 days into the assignment. I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for God entrusting this to us. Thank you for him opening up the portal and the streams of revelation, of understanding, of prayer. Bless you, my God. Thank you for the set time. Wasn't able to go live at 3.30, but we have prayed. Thank you for the set time, the set time of standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Thank you for the set time of knowing and hearing and being in sync with the move and the movements of heaven. Happy Mother's Day, Sister Janice. So let's just enter with prayer and prepare to receive what God has for us. Father, we thank you for this is the hour you have assigned for this day for us to come to you, to pray, to seek your face, to receive, oh God, the release for this day concerning being Jezebel proof, concerning being mothers, being women, being intercessors, gatekeepers, and watchmen who are prepared, oh God, who have been processed, and who are in position to release only that which can be released by your spirit and your word. Thank you for this place. Thank you for the intercessors who have been faithful for the 14 days. Thank you for every praise request, re re report, report, every praise report and every prayer request. Thank you that we're seeing the walls of Jezebel crumble and we're seeing the weapons, oh God, of the enemy not only be exposed but be brought to naught. Thank you that you don't allow us or require of us any amount of sacrifice, oh God, that you don't reward. Your reward is still great. And, and we come once more again expecting, expecting, expecting. We never come, God, without an expectation. We never come. She kind without knowing, Lord God, that you're going to do that which only you can do, that which you have yet to do, that which it's been said to us, it's impossible, oh God. We come, we come, we come uh, expecting you to move, to breathe, to release, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We come looking for our armor, God, to be sharpened in the name of Jesus. We come looking for our armor to be sharpened against this diabolical spirit that is Jezebel, and you will deliver, and you will fulfill, and you will God will meet us. So have your way now. Let everything that is not of you in our atmosphere, God, on this platform, let it be brought into subjection to the name of Jesus and to the will of God. We bless you. Breathe upon this time, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen and amen. I, I don't plan on being before you long. God bless you, Mother Deborah. Happy Mother's Day. Just wanted to go quickly to 1 Samuel 1, 1 Samuel 1, and read a little bit about Hannah and, and release what God has said and pray and pray. It's been a long but fulfilling and blessed day. It's been a, a blessed day, a blessed day, a blessed day. I'm just so thankful to God for real tangible love. And, you know, there are seasons where blessings have been blocked and hindered. There are seasons where the people that God has placed or ordained to be in your life have been hindered from being in your life and being able to mother you, be a spiritual mother, or even be a spiritual daughter because of the spirit of Jezebel. There are seasons, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, where the prophetic womb is literally shut up shut up and and not able to produce and birth as God has ordained because of the spirit of Jezebel and the works of Jezebel. But thanks be unto God for every ounce of wisdom, revelation, knowledge and understanding so we can take the entity, this entity, its operations, its kingdom down so the prophetic womb can flow freely. 1 Samuel 1 verse 5. 
through 11, starting at 5. But to Hannah from the Amplified, but to Hannah he would give a double portion because he loved Hannah, but the Lord had given her no children. Hannah's rival provoked her bitterly to irritate and embarrass her because the Lord had left her childless. So it happened year after year, whenever she went up to the house of the Lord, Penina provoked her, so she wept and would not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you cry and why do you not eat? Why are you so sad and discontent? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Nine. So Hannah got up after eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his sheep beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. Hannah was greatly distressed and she prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. She made a vow saying, O Lord of course, if you will indeed look upon the affliction, suffering of your maidservant and remember and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And a razor shall never touch his head. For Samuel 1 verses 5 through 11. Why is God having us go here on this 14th day? of the Jezebel proof assignment. Very simple, beloved. It's not about Mother's Day, though we acknowledge and celebrate the mothers. But God wanted me to recognize from this text and for us to identify and recognize from this text that Jezebel is after the prophetic womb, the prophetic womb. And in the, prophet, the prophetic womb, out of the prophetic womb, I should say, it, flows prophetic intercession, flows prophetic warfare, prophetic worship, so many things that are relevant. If it's prophetic, it's bringing God's will into a region, God's will, God's will for that time, that season, into a family, into a household, into a church and a ministry. So if that is shot up, the people cannot receive the flow of heaven, the flow of intercession as ordained by God for that hour. Verse Six, we know Hannah would be given a double portion by her husband because she didn't have any children. That even wasn't the reason why Penina provoked her. Sometimes we, oh my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? Sometimes we think it's the blessing that makes Jezebel come after us. It's the material blessing. I'm blessed and highly favored. You have two businesses and, and multiple ministries. You think that's what Jezebel is after. Listen, the Satan blesses. Those of the kingdom of, of darkness can get wealth and secure blessings from their father, the devil. That is not what the enemy is after. What the enemy is after is the womb, the womb, the prophetic womb. What God, what only God can give. What only God can bless with. That is what the enemy is after. My God help us this evening. He did not, she did not provoke her because her husband, their husband gave her a double portion. Why did Penina provoke Hannah? First Samuel 1 and 6. Hannah's rival provoked her bitterly. Pay attention from the Amplified Bible. To irritate, to embarrass because the Lord had left her childless. Did the Lord leave her childless or did she not have enough faith to come against the agents of darkness that were holding up her womb? Was she so downtrodden by Penina's attack, oh my God, that she could not arise and war for her womb like she was supposed to. A couple of hours ago, I was ministering to a woman of God and the Lord gave me a word and I didn't even know it tied into this. He said, tell her daughter to stay in the fight until I knock her opponent out. Stay in the fight until God knocks your opponent out. And that was profound for her. I actually went into my app that I use for my quotes and I captured it. I said, God, that's good for her, but uh, we all can receive something from that. Stay in the fight until I knock your opponent out. Beloved, it's warfare. This walk comes with warfare. 
This walk comes with warfare. The call to intercession comes with warfare. The call to be a wife comes with warfare. To be a mother, to be a pastor, whatever you're called to be. Prophetess, evangelist, teacher, apostle. To be a follower of Jesus Christ. You are going to have to be suited up and battle the enemy. Can we stay in the fight long enough for God to knock our opponent out? Or do we disqualify ourselves before the referee calls it? Do we just disqualify and say, you know, I'm out. This is too hard, God. This is not what I signed up for. I can't take the provocation, the mockery, the taunts of the paninas in my life. They're trying to irritate and embarrass me. Or is your flesh going to die? Oh, I just wanted to pray, but the Holy Ghost. Is your flesh going to die and that you endure? Try to embarrass me what you want. I will not give you the right or the power to embarrass me. Try to provoke and irritate me all you want. You will never have that much power because only God has my ear. Only God has my mind. Only God has my heart. So only God can influence it. Help me tonight, Holy Ghost. Help us all. Masha, Kora, Hannah's rival provoked her bitterly. Do we have a person in our life? Do we all have, we all experience people in the family, in the ministry, in the church? Kamasha, Karaba, Handera, Hasia. Who, who just exists? They're demonically placed in the sign to provoke you bitterly. Yet God, Allows it because there's a purpose. He wants to prove that that which is in your womb is more powerful than that which is in Jezebel's womb and the enemy's womb. Hannah's response would be just to weep and not eat. Cry and not eat. How many situations have we allowed to make us sit here and be depressed and downtrodden? Jezebel. Can't eat, can't worship, can't pray, can't function. God forbid. Verse 9, her husband said what he said. But what she needed was to get in the presence of her heavenly father, her God. Sometimes a provocation is necessary to ignite and to awaken that level of intercession in your life. Can we be honest? Listen, if it was not for certain situations, we wouldn't have the prayer lives we had. We wouldn't have to battle the way we battle. We wouldn't have to bite and bind and loose and war. Mandara hasi and rebuke and renounce. Yena hasi. We would not have the need. It would not be necessary for us. Komasia. Rebaki hasi. To decree and declare on that level. To have that measure of faith. If it wasn't for the kind of enemy we dealt with. The kind of Jezebelic spirits. The kind of witchcraft and warfare. I always say this. Elisha took my prayer life to the next dimension. Because I refused. After losing five babies before him. To carry him all the way to the thri third, thri third trimester, there was an attack. I was like, no, uh uh, it can't work. And God saw me through it. And then the day he was born, there was another attack. But I refused to believe, to accept anything less than the promise of God. I will weep before God. I will weep before the enemy. I will cry before God. I will, God, whatever it takes, whatever you have to do, I will plead. I refuse to believe I will carry a child full term and he be full stillborn or only live a short while. The devil is a liar. We have to guard the prophetic womb. If we have to make a vow like Hannah in 1 Samuel 5 and 11, Lord, if you look after this situation, if you give me the grace, the strength, the understanding, the wherewithal, the anointing, the, oh my God, vigor, and the discipline to finish, to finish strong, to make it through this season, God, to pray without ceasing. If you do it, God, I'm making a vow to you that I will never leave your presence, God. I will never backslide. 
See, uh, Hannah made her vow. Some of us need to make a vow to the Lord that God, if you show us how to be Jezebel proof, if you give us the weapons to make us impenetrable, our lives, our ministry, those we stand in the gap for our households, our marriages, our children, our lineage, our bloodline, impenetrable, untouchable, oh God, and inaccessible to the spirit and the weapons of Jezebel, God, we're making a vow. See, if you make our bodies immune, have divine immunity, and not be on a bed of affliction because we walk in divine Help. If you, God, send salvation to the bloodline. Everybody has the thing they believe in God for. If you would save my siblings and my family, if you would erase the curse of Islam of the bloodline, I'm making a vow that I will serve you. I will give you. Hannah was saying she would give the Lord all the days of hit of Samuel's life or her son's life. She asked for a son and she got just that. It's the B part of 1 Samuel 1 and 11. Then, then she said, I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. We need to make a vow and say, God, if you do this, I will give you my life. For the rest of my days, it's Jesus. You will be head. You will be Lord. You will be king. You will be Messiah and master. I don't know. Nothing will take your place, oh God. Nothing, oh God, will be seated above you in my life. You occupy my heart, God. I live for you. I breathe for you. I function for you. Whatever you Oh, God, require of me. I make the vow. Why? Because what God has given us, oh, my God, if he can give us the grace and the power to grab, to protect and shield a physical womb, he can do it for a prophetic womb. There are things God has placed in some of us. Creation is waiting for the manifesting of the sons of God. We can't get there because we're in the weeping room. We're in the crying room. Where Hannah was, we're so distressed and in anguish. We're not fasting and praying, we're crying and unable to eat because of Jezebel's provocation and mockery. But today, God is saying, receive my strength, receive my power, receive my anointing. Stay in the fight until I take your opponent out. That thing that Penina was able to use to taunt and mock and provoke Hannah, God completely took it. Koba Shatara, barrenness was born. Uh, Hannah's prophetic womb was open. Not only did she have one son, but seven. So she birthed nations. She birthed a prophet and a prophetic nation. She birthed Koba Hasi and Hasi lineage of righteousness. What the enemy is after is bigger than you, is bigger than me. Can we pray now that we get it? Father, we thank you. We thank you even for the provocation of Jezebel. That everything that Jezebel has done, you're going to turn around and use it for our good. But you are placing us now in a position spiritually and naturally where we don't set our eyes on Jezebel. Where Jezebel's movements no longer has any bearing on God on our faith. It has no bearing on our prayer life. It has no bearing on our obedience to you. It cannot touch our joy, our peace, our love, our understanding. Understanding, oh God, hear my heart, see all our obedience. It will not hinder us from birthing God, from birthing whatever you have ordained for us to birth in the bloodline and the family. In the nations, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that prophetic womb is bearing uh, and is seared, and it will uh, bear much fruit. Koramanda see whatever you have for us to birth uh, beyond oh God ministry, we will birth in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have for us to birth uh, in the lives of our children, our children will not oh God uh, be hijacked. Koramahasi be held back, uh, be limited as we have been by Jezebel because they will have these tools in their youth in the infancy of their walk with you God there will be a terror to the kingdom of darkness thank you that this wisdom is generational thank you that this power is generational thank you that this anointing is generational oh God that our wounds will not miscarry and we will not abort any prophetic wounds because of what you placed in us is too precious. What you placed in us, God, is bigger than us. 
It's for generations. It's for nations. It's for your people, God. And out of the mercy of the enemy, and not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It's so your people can receive an impartation of your truth. Your shield, your buckler, to rise against, oh God, the weapons of Jezebel, to live above the grasp, the reach, and the touch of the agents of Jezebel, God. We thank you. We thank you. As you share in this prophetic womb, oh God, and as you open up the portals for it to birth, your greater works, your greater works, oh God. Ah, oh, Jesus. Came out, see, I know, oh, see, we don't need churches. We don't need a physical church. We don't need a building, an office space. We need, oh God, before she conceives Samuel in the natural, she had to conceive him spiritually, God. The promise is to be conceived first before it can be birthed. Makia, help, help, help the prophetic womb, oh God, to conceive again. It's no longer barren in the name of Jesus. Catch it. Conceive the promises of God for your bloodline. Conceive it for your mother who can't. Conceive it for your children who can't. Conceive it for the spouse who can't. Conceive it for the nation that cannot. Conceive it for the region that cannot. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. And every download, all strategy, oh God, all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding that we give you, we make a vow to you, Lord of hosts, Yeshua HaMashiach. We make a vow to you, God, that we will give you the rest of our days. Our wounds are trustworthy. Our prophetic wounds are trustworthy. You can trust us, oh God, with the seed and flow, oh God, of your spirit, with the seed and flow of the prophetic grace and mandates and mantles. You can trust us with the seed and flow of healing, of deliverance to a people and a nation that is so broken. And Father, we take a moment and pray now in the name of Jesus for every mother who has been estranged from her child because of the taunts and the works of Jezebel. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. That the weapons of Jezebel fall and fail. Break them, oh God, at the head. And at the end, break it, make it utterly destroyed and unusable. That gate, that door, that portal the enemy had to cause destruction, separation, parental alienation. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is shut and sealed by your blood. Access is denied to the enemy. Reconcile and restore relationships. That your people are not at funerals trying to wonder if they're in right standing with you. That the grief is a different grief because they did not humble themselves. While the parent or the child was yet alive. Father, we pray for a release of honor in this nation. That that spirit, that yoke, that curse of dishonor that seems to plague me regions and territories and bloodlines that causes children to dishonor their parents, causes children to dishonor grandparents. Break it, God. Utterly destroy it in the name of Jesus. Nail it to that cross, oh God. Nail, nail the curse of dishonor to the cross, Jesus. And restore honor to families that parents will honor their children with an agape and a stream of love that will cancel out every present, past, and future dishonor. Raise up, oh God, champions and giants who walk in integrity and honor, purity of heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we will not be like the world. We will not seek to pay back and avenge, oh God, Parents who failed us, children who failed us, step parents, grandparents, guardians, whoever. 
in the reign of forgiveness and reconciliation. Remind your people that they must forgive because you require it. And because we cannot be forgot, forgiven if we don't forgive. And surely, God, we have wronged you. We pray for a release, a divine outpouring and flow of honor. Honor, honor, shakura bahasi, honor, shikandara, loving honor, shikundara, sekira, the people who will esteem parents, those God you've given to lead us, our elders, who will esteem them higher, even if they're an addict, God, give the children, give the grandchildren a grace to honor them until they're delivered and snatched from the jaws and the hand of Jezebel, mando komasi, in the name of Jesus, God. God, send the rain, an overflow, and an outpour of honor in the name of Jesus. In the church, in the church where there's so much dishonor, restore honor to your people, to Christendom, oh God. And where there's dishonor, Father, send conviction, send correction, send repentance. But we're not too prideful to repent. We're not too prideful because God, above all, we want to please you. We do not want to be the cause, the reason, the hindrance, the Jezebel in our way. We don't want to be the, the one operating in the works and spirit of Jezebel. We don't want to be the one causing the barrenness in our prophetic wounds and in the spirit, in our lives. Restore us to a place of righteous honor so God you can be free to move you can open up every womb every womb every stream every portal that's been inaccessible to us in the name of Jesus give us a heart even like Hannah she didn't pray vengeful prayers she didn't pray that you would curse her rival Penina she prayed that you, God, will look upon her affliction. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, that you will look upon the affliction of your people, even our enemies. And that if it is possible, as you're looking upon them, that their hearts change, that their minds change, that their wills change. They will stop being Jezebel's in auction puppets and turn to be in your instruments, your vessels of honor. My God, make us vessels of honor again, God, so we can bestow honor and release honor to those who truly need it. We thank you for the wisdom this night that our wounds will never and no longer be barren or unfruitful because of the attacks, the provocation, the taunts, and the weapons of the enemy. We thank you that we will stay in the ring of intercession, in the fight of intercession, until every opponent is taken out and knocked down by you, God. We just have to obey you. We just have to stay in your will. We just have to give our lives to you all the days of our life. And you will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we thank you that your grace and your peace follows us. In the name of Jesus, your grace, your grace, your all-sufficient grace, it follows us. That for the rest of this year, the God of peace, the God of all grace, will be evident in our lives, in our households, in our ministries, in our families, our homes, our workplaces. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, we thank you, we magnify and glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed night and I pray 
Everybody had a blessed Mother's Day. Love you. Good night.